blind tasting day. Yeah. I think I'm feeling I'm really pretty good about today's blind tasting. I don't know. But I do have to remember that we have the most number of oolongs out of every other type in our tea collection. So while it's the kind of tea that I know the most, it's also the kind of tea that we have the most of. And so it's going to be a little tricky to try to figure out exactly what it is that we're dealing with today during this blind tasting. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I am excited as usual. Um, so welcome to Tea Practice. Uh, Ray and Steven here. It's a... Uh, Actually, it's pretty nice today. It's only 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what, like 30 something degrees Celsius? Um, here in Las Vegas, we had one of the hottest summers ever here. Um, but yeah, today we're gonna be going into an oolong blind tasting. Uh, Seems gonna pop that up. Let's see if I can pin this. How do I pin this? There we go, pin comment. <laughs> and yeah, we are going to be testing, tasting uh, three different oolong teas today. Uh, if we get to three, um, Steven has picked out three random oolongs from our collection. Um, and then I'll have to use our typical setup, um, which is my choice. I can, uh, you know, it, it's, I'm not restricted to what kind of method I, I can use here. But I do want to use our control setup to evaluate the T's and see if we can figure out exactly what they are. So um, we're going to try to figure out more or less the type. So if it's like a Dongding oolong or a Dansong or a you know, anti Tiguanian. If it's roasted, not roasted. If it's aged, I should probably be able to identify that. And then if I really want to get fancy, but this is not required, maybe the cultivar, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, but if the type of tea uh, is very central to the kind of cultivar it is, for example, like a Jinshuan Oolong from Taiwan or a Milan Xiang from, from uh, uh, Guangdong, uh, like a Dansong, I need to be able to identify that as well. So yeah, we were saying that, you know, oolong is the category that I know the most. I feel most comfortable about oolong. I'm not an you know, expert by any means, but um, I do like oolong teas. I uh, have quite a lot of experience with them, but we also have the most oolongs in our collection. So out of like 300 plus teas we have, about 150 of them are oolong teas. <laughs> so almost half of our tea kind of library here at home is, is oolong. So. It's not going to be just a random uh, random guess here. I'll have to like work really hard to see what this oolong tea is that we're going to be doing. So yeah, welcome to practice today. Let us know what you guys are drinking. Um, I see Eric. Good afternoon to you, Eric. Garden Tea Lounge, Potter's Tea. Hey, nice Parker. Um, and the signed band that sign up. <laughs> and then Stephen, of course. Uh, and Tina One. Uh, welcome, welcome. We are going to be setting up our kind of control setup. Uh, which we discussed last week during our um, how to evaluate tea session. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get going. As always, our control setup is a bowl. Um, we use the same bowl every single time and then a uh, porcelain spoon so that we can kind of like play around with the leaves, evaluate them, smell the, the spoon. And the thing is you can use a uh, teapot if you'd like to. For example, we were using this teapot that was on Instagram stories. Uh, to brew jinshibari this morning, but the thing is if I put that oolong in this teapot, but the oolong isn't really a good match for the teapot or the teapot hugely changes the taste of the tea, um, we're not going to be able to identify it as accurately, I think, because let's say if the, if the pot is, uh, it helps the tea smooth out, some of the sharp notes of a low elevation oolong might get kind of smoothed out by that pot and I'm not going to be able to tell that it's a low elevation or high elevation if the pot is doing flav favors for the tea or if it's just changing it in a certain way. Um, so yeah, 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 we like this pot too. <laughs> but we, we're not going to use um, a pot today, we're just going to use our bowl. It just gives us ultimate control, I think, and confidence over the evaluation process. So this is not how we usually drink tea, but this is how we kind of get to know a tea before we put it in a pot that matches it best or if we're doing a blind tasting we just gotta identify it uh, kind of size it up to see what the quality is see what the the characteristics are of the tea this is the the way i would say yeah so let's, let's get that warmed up let us know what you guys are drinking this lovely saturday feels like morning to us we've been putting some late late nights filming for a tea roadmap challenge which has been really fun <laughs> lots of laughs, <laughs> um, 
yeah, we're not used to doing uh, camera filming. We're used to doing like Instagram live stuff, but uh, yeah, me in front of like an actual Fuji camera, man, it's been really, really tough. Um, you're like, oh, Reed, you do so much of this live stuff. Isn't video stuff super useful, like super just comfortable to you now? And I'm gonna say no. <laughs> It's a little easier doing live stuff because I know you guys are just hanging out with us. Uh, uh, and then Eric is asking, can we know and re not? If you are on the Discord, the teas are actually on the announcements channel under a spoiler tag if you like to see what they are. Uh, if you'd like to play along with us, I'm going to be trying to call out the, uh, the taste of the tea as we go along. So maybe you can try to see if you can just kind of make a guess based on how the tea looks, how the tea is being described. Um, I'm going to show you the dry leaves in just a little bit once we get started. Um, I do have a one hour time limit. I forgot about that. Let's do that. Starting off with number one out of three. Steven, how'd you pick the order? Did you start me off with an easy one to make me happy? <laughs> so we always do the setup. I'm going to go, go by it stage by stage again. Um, just so that we can practice. So even if this is stuff that you've heard before, you know, just practice it along with me because the more that you can kind of like hammer in this process, the more it's going to become kind of natural to you once you do it. And we'll, we'll start by looking at the dry leaves. So I asked Stephen to weigh out 2.5 grams of each leaf material. Um, and from the very beginning, I want you to try to pull as much information from the dry leaves because of course, the taste of the tea will tell us a very much, uh, the very most about the tea. Um, I don't, I, I would recommend trying to guess what the tea is just based on the leaves, of course. But the more that you can kind of ramp up with as little information, going up to more information, but still being able to make a guess, I think it's going to build your confidence. And also you can always revise what your initial guess is based on what you're uh, smelling, tasting, feeling from the tea. So just on the dry leaf, I'm noticing that there's some kind of odd pieces that don't look very <laughs> Taiwanese or Chinese. Could be like a lower grade Chinese oolong. Um, but when you see kind of pieces like this, when the leaves are usually, you know, most of them are very small and kind of, you know, tightly, or not really tightly, but they're kind of the strip style oolong. You have these older leaves. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, makes me, just on first glance, it's either a not classical tea region, like it's not China or Taiwan um, for oolong, and or it's a lower grade oolong from China or Taiwan. Uh, lots of stems, which is not always a bad thing necessarily, but just noting it. And I'm seeing some unevenness in the processing which again tells me it might be a kind of off the beaten path, path kind of, kind of oolong. Uh, we do have some weird oolongs in that box. So yeah. let's see. I mean, we've got some Japanese oolong, I think. It could be a Japanese oolong. I can see that happening. Some kind of Indian, Nepalese oolong, something like that. Yeah. And then kind of shiny leaves. They're a little bit, they feel a little light. So maybe like a later harvest. Basically not the top, top, top grade. This is not top, top, top grade like Dan Song or, or An Chi Te Guan Yin or, uh, you know, Oriental Beauty, nothing like that. Something weird, <laughs> I think, is what this is. Not much smell to the dry leaf on its own. So we've got our preheated bowl. Now, I'm going to put that in. And then now because the bowl is heated up, we can test the aroma. Wow, that's interesting. What the hell is this? It's kind of, it's kind of smoky, kind of chocolatey. It smells really good, actually. I think it's kind, it's it's got some roast on it of some sort. Wow, I wouldn't have thought this was an oolong. Actually, I thought it was like a black tea, like a lighter black tea. Interesting. Shiloh, good morning. Uh, Books by the cup, welcome. Um, Alexandra said, Gagini, welcome. Eric says, I, I prefer intuitive steeping more than cereal bowl method. But blind tasting, probably a good idea. Yeah, for the most part, we actually don't use the cereal bowl method for just drinking tea. We don't use a timer, we don't really use a scale, unless it's a newer tea. But for this, I think it's really important to have control. So I don't want to do, you know, too, too intuitive here. 
So smoky, chocolatey, what could this be? It's got a roast on it of some sort. I think it's some kind of like weird, like, not not weird in a bad way, but like weird in a good mm. way, like South Asian oolong of some sort. Maybe a Japanese oolong. Um, could this be baliocha? You're going to make Eric upset because ah. baliocha is not oolong. <laughs> baliocha is this Korean tea that uh, it's kind of like an oolong, kind of not. Kind of like a black tea, kind of not. Kind of like a yellow tea. They, they're supposed to vary. I don't know very much about baliocha. But, uh, um, yeah, I don't think this is a baliocha. The leaves kind of do look like a baliocha, though, a little bit. <laughs> uh, Eric says, have I tasted a Japanese oolong? Would have been with you. Maybe. I'm not sure. It's possible. I like to bring some weird teas over uh, when I visit Eric in, in St. Louis. Uh, Maddie B20, Melinda Earl, welcome to Tea Practice today. Let us know what you guys are drinking on this lovely Saturday. And this is steeping, you know, pretty average. Sometimes I find that uh, the higher grade teas take a little bit longer to get darker in the cup because they're so sticky that it takes a while for them to open, especially the bald style oolong. But I'm just, I'm just spouting off here. And then let's smell the aroma from the, the, uh, the spoon. I'm going to try to limit ourselves to an hour today. So I'm on a time limit. All right. Wow, that smells really, really good. Yeah, I don't think this is Taiwan. Could it be? It's like a weird Taiwan one. If it is, it's possible. I get like a kind of fruitiness that reminds me of Taiwan. I don't think it's Chinese though. So yeah, unusual Taiwanese one. None of the classic Taiwanese. So not a Dongding. You can tell by the leaves. It's not a Dongding or high mountain oolong or uh, anything like that. Ooh, what is this? What the heck is this? Ooh. That's interesting. I have no idea what this is. I'm I'm just like I'm just stumped. It's gotta be a wow, what what is this Steven? What did you pick? I have no idea. Usually when I when I do these blind tastings I have some idea of what's gonna be. But right now I have no clue. Uh, man, so weird looking leaves. It doesn't look like it's Taiwanese or Chinese. Could it be Japanese oolong? I'm not sure if we have one right now. You know what? I think, I think we do. I think this might be a Japanese oolong. Uh, and I find that Japanese oolongs have a little bit of that thing where the liquor is a little bit lighter than other oolongs. This is just something that you'll get from just repeating and repeating and tasting as many teas as possible. But what I remember is that the Japanese oolongs I've had have a kind of thin looking liquor. It might be a Japanese oolong. And I also remember that the Japanese oolongs have this kind of stemmy thing going on. I don't think it's South Asian. It's just a little bit too delicate to be um, Indian oolong or Nepalese oolong, I think. And none of that kind of dancey Nepalese high or high aroma vibes are in this, I think. No, it's, I don't think it's Nepalese. I don't think it's Indian. Hmm, interesting. <sighs> yeah, wow. Um, can I make similarities between it and like a Japanese green tea? So now that I think it's a Japanese oolong, we can think, is there any Japanese green tea that tastes or looks like this? I would actually say yes. This kind of has like a hojicha thing going on, which is that chocolatey and kind of smoky thing. So maybe it is. Maybe it is Japanese oolong. But that's weird. Why would they? Why would they do? <laughs> Usually, Japanese oolongs when they do exist, they do you know take some care of them because it's you know you're gonna be like a smaller batch. But still, it might be a little bit more experimental to them, which is why it's kind of showing up as not super even in the processing. And when I see not so even processing, think about it. What would a amateur chef's stir fry look like compared to like a pro chef's stir fry? Just have two like home cook and, and, and professional chef. Maybe you watch those videos on YouTube where they do like professional chef, amateur chef, and like beginner cook. Who is going to have the most consistent looking stir fry or the most consistent looking fried rice or the most consistent looking steak or burrito, whatever, no matter what it is, I think the more kind of like used to the process, 
that person is, whether it's tea or or food or wine, ceramics, etc., the more consistent the the thing will look. So that's why I'm reading this as you know a tea that's not from a region that usually makes oolong. Because if I brought this to Taiwan, who they specialize in oolong, they'd be like, what, what, what's something's wrong with it? <laughs> the leaves are not that even. There's some processing unevenness. And what I mean is the color of the leaves is a little bit, you know, shifting. You know, it's not just one color. It's not it's not consistently um, spread out uh, in color. There's some like light patches, there's some dark patches, which to me is inconsistency in processing. But it does taste very good. So it's not like they're just not, they don't know what they're doing. The, the reason why we do this cereal bowl method, uh, this, this tea control setup that we do, is uh, we find that the higher grade teas will not get bitter, even if you steep it like this. So this is just a very good way of not just evaluating the tea, but also picking out immediately what's a good tea or a bad tea. Because this is, if this is a very poorly processed tea, by now it's going to be very bitter, kind of astringent, dry. Look how long we're steeping this. You know, I'm kind of playing around with it. So the more the leaves are steeping, the more they should be getting bitter. But this here is not getting very bitter at all. Uh, there's a nice ho yun, which is that kind of like cooling kind of throat aftertaste. Um, a little bit of hui gan, which is that kind of like flavor aftertaste on the palate. So it's a, it's a pretty good tea. I like it. I am going to say though, the Japanese oolong that we have has a withering problem that this one does not. So I'm kind of wondering what the hell this is. <sighs> wow. Japanese oolong? If this is the Japanese oolong, I don't remember which one it is from our collection. Because there is one that I remember and it has a it has a withering problem. This one does not have a withering problem. And a withering problem is just like a processing problem that I've just learned a taste for it. Uh, gosh, yeah, and all of these things, even if you don't know what the stuff is, I want you to be able to make your own kind of clues in your head as to what teas taste like. So when you're used to drinking like a ginger may, what do you think of when it's ginger may? Try to make a connection. Is it is it chocolatey? Is it floral? Is it orange chocolate? You know, uh, does it taste like milk chocolate? I know Christine, our friend, thinks that Lapsang Souchong and Jinjin Mei is like milk chocolate. So then whenever she tastes milk chocolate, she's going to be able to be like, Hey, is this a Jinjin Mei or a, or a Lapsang Souchong? Uh, or if it's a Shang Puar and you know that the Shang Puar has like an incense floral flavor, try to remember that so that when you're blind tasting again later on and you get that floral incense, you're like, I think that's a Shang Puar, you know? So to me, that withering problem just connects me immediately to that one Japanese one we have. This does not taste like that. What the hell is this, Steven? I'm stumped. Wow. Uh, Dro, welcome. Can you, do you think you can help yeah. change my luck here? <laughs> is it Taiwan? Is, it, is there any from... I, this is, I don't think this is Taiwanese oolong. Is it China? Uh, it could be like a lower grade Chinese oolong. Um, man. Is it Japan? It could be Japan, but the Japanese oolong we have is not like it. Uh, it's, don't have an Indonesian oolong. We don't have an Indian oolong that tastes like this. What could this be? Could it be a, maybe like a Nepalese oolong? A Nepalese oolong that I'm not used to. I mean, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, it doesn't taste Nepalese to me though, which is a problem because I can usually identify Nepalese teas. This does not have a Nepalese taste. It's just too earthy. It's just too warm. It's just too... Nepal has that kind of like, I'm not sure if you guys have had a lot of Nepalese teas, but they have that kind of like, kind of like poppy, poppy flavor to it. And this tea is very just like, bassy and... You'd like to drink this tea while you're having some, um, uh, like some reading time in the basement with the fire going and a blanket. It's very cozy, and it, it does have a roast on it. It's very good. So I'm like, well, is it a yancha? Uh, it's, I don't think it's a yancha because a yancha that looks like this would not be a good yancha. 
Because good yancha has a lot of consistency in the leaves. What the hell is this? I might lose round one. Yeah. God damn it. Can't think of it. Oh man, I think it's a Japanese umlong of some sort. But the one that I'm thinking of is not this one. Maybe it's changed. You sure this is a nulong tea? Yes. It tastes like hojicha. That's the mm -hmm. closest thing I can think of. This tastes like hojicha. Oh man. As all Joe said, Jinjin may taste like crushed hopes and dreams. <laughs> oh my goodness. I do like lap sang su chong better than Jinjin may, I would say. Like just blow by blow. A really good lap sang su chong that's unsmoked. Like the traditional kind of like the wild pomu style. I really like that better than Jinjin may. Depending on the Jinjin may, of course, but. Yeah, I like that kind of silky, milky, sweet thing that uh, good lap sang su chong has that's not smoked. You're killing me. What is this? I think, I could guess. I think it's Japanese oolong because it t tastes like hojicha. If, yeah, if this was... So you need to identify it a little more because you need to be more specific than just country you know like <laughs> oh shit wait so japanese oolong so does that mean that i'm on the right track if it's a japanese oolong i think that's pretty good because like jap jap like japan doesn't have like a, a kind of oolong you know what i mean so you want to know I would say if it's Japanese oolong, I don't think I have to identify the region because they're just so all over the place. Japanese dark oolong. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, roasted j j the dark dark Japanese oolong. Yeah, I want to know. I think I'm just gonna cut my bases. It tastes. It looks like a hojicha to me. It, it just if you like blindfolded me. This is one last one. It tastes like hojicha. It even feels like hojicha. Like I want to go to sleep. <laughs> okay, what is it? Let's 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 do it. Japanese oolong. I'm gonna be upset. <gasps> yes, <laughs> Japanese oolong. Wow, I almost shook the table. <laughs> cool beans. All right, nice. So it is a Japanese oolong. This one is a Japanese oolong from Yanoko tea. I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't need it. This is not an area. So I think it's fine. Right. Dope. So yes, it is a Japanese oolong. Oh my god, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> That's so specific. Wow. Yes. Okay, so I'm in the lead <laughs> for once in our lives. <laughs> so this is the Hinokuni oolong from Yanoko Tea, which is crazy because they didn't... This is not even listed on their site yet. This is a sample that Ian gave me to try when we got our order of the pre-order teas this, this weekend. I mean, this this spring. Holy crap, wow. I'm in the lead, you guys. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. So that I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have forever because we're running like an hour, hour time limit, which means if we go to the tiebreaker, I need to be able to, I need to be able to uh, have enough time to get into the tiebreaker. How much time do we have left, Steven? We're 20 minutes, so you're on the right. Yes! Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. All right. Dude, I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been doing so badly on the blind tastings lately. Yes! So the first one was Japanese oolong. Nice. I, I got it. <laughs> All right. So next one. Don't... Okay, don't get too excited, Re. I might get this wrong. Steven might come back. So now Steven's on the... Gotta get him all down. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to tea practice. You guys have been coming in just now. Uh, this is an oolong blind tasting where I'm trying to identify oolongs that Steven has picked at random. This one looks like a dance song. Okay, so the first one I got right, which I'm I'm really stoked about. I shook the table. I was so excited. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Med Hatter Tea Trunk, welcome. Wind up Drago, welcome. Uh, we're gonna do the second one. If I get this right. I win. If I get this wrong, we go to round three. So I'm 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 on good on time right now. I can't believe I got that right. That's awesome. All right. So, uh, same steps. Let's check this out. Uh, this looks like a dance song to me. Uh, wiry. It just has a dance song look. <laughs> um, 
So Dan Song is that kind of oolong that's famous from Guangdong province in China. Um, so Phoenix oolong, Dan Song, Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix bush. I mean, yeah, they're all mm-hmm. the same thing. Um, Feng Huang, Dan Song, same thing. So um, yeah, it just looks like it. I don't think it's a Taiwanese oolong. I don't think this is a odd region because the 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 processing is very even on it and it's kind of hard to do that kind of strip style if you're not trying to get there so yo by the way i gotta say thank you to joe because joe gave me like the when he came in i was like i got the confidence now so thanks joe (laughs) um because i I specifically asked joe please give me luck but that's not luck that's just me being awesome (laughs) i'm just kidding (laughs) uh man so yeah uh, i think this is a dance song long yeah super even look how even the leaves are they're just so even so this seems like this is a traditional chinese tea i would say uh let's get going we don't want to get too too high high up on our high horse i find that tea is one of those things that if you get too big headed it will punish you that's just something i've learned over the years the moment that you think you know anything the tea will punish you (laughs) (laughs) because tea i think is a very light-hearted teacher um, it's very patient, it's very gentle, it's very, very kind. It's so fun. Like, tea is just so lighthearted that the moment that you step over the, the line and you take it too seriously and you your head gets a little bit too big, it's going to blow. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, that's, that's I think that's kind of why we kind of try to, like, keep it, you know, make sure that we know that we don't know everything because... Not because I know that I shouldn't know everything, but I, I really have been punished before by thinking that I know about tea. <laughs> it hasn't happened in the last few years because I think I've learned my lesson. But yeah, so let's pick up the leaves. Ooh, they're, they're pretty, they've got some heft to them. So I really do think that consistency, the weight of the leaves, the look of the leaves, do they have a smell? Not much. I'm kind of like kind of like a clog nose today too, so I'm a, yeah. operating at a deficit today. Uh, yeah. All right. Let us know what you guys are drinking on this lovely Saturday. That's a dance song. Yeah. Now I gotta figure out what dance song it is. God damn it, that's harder. Okay. So this is a dance song, and as we said in the beginning, if it is a classic type of tea, I need to be able to identify the type of that tea so the very first round we did japanese oolong japanese oolong isn't like a solidified area you know it's um it's a weird tea that there's not a agreed upon cultivar or area or processing type for japanese oolong so just the fact that i identified it is just good enough but if we have a traditional oolong like this which is i think it's clearly a dan song right now i already know um, I, I want to push forward and try to identify what type of dance song it is because we should try to f- maybe, you know, know. Because I do have the ability to think about what I have in my collection, so I should be able to pinpoint which cultivar it is for me to get the point. So just me identifying it as a phoenix oolong is not enough here. So let's see. It smells? Yeah, let's, 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 let's smell it, the, the xiang of the, the tea, the fragrance. Yeah, my very, very first just gut feeling is that it's a Milan Xiang. It's, it doesn't have that kind of... Yeah, Milan Xiang to me is very sweet. It's very straightforward. I think that something like Dakshi Oolong, uh, Yashi Xiang, is a little bit more kind of... Kind of... Uh, it's got a little bit more like elegance to it. It's got a little bit more of that sour, kind of bitter uh, thing going on in the aroma. I feel like... Milan Xiang is very straightforward, very sweet, very friendly, very smooth. Um, so I think this is a Milan Xiang. Let's see how it goes. So now in our heads, this is why I want you to be able to make a guess from the very beginning. Because now that I have a guess, Milan Xiang, I'm going to be able to work against my own guess to see if it still holds up. So if I try it, if I try it, and I'm like, oh, damn, that's not Milan Xiang. It's much easier to throw out that original guess and change it. Versus if you're there, like, tasting your day and you're like, actually, what, what is it again? Is it a Milan Xiang or is it a, 
Yashi Xiang or Jinan Xiang or whatever. There's so many, there's so many fragrances, especially for Dansong Oolong. So I think it's very important to make those first guesses so you can kind of, kind of play devil's advocate with them and see if it tests out based on what your guesses are. This is keeping really, really nice. Very pretty clear. Uh, yeah, I will say that when it comes to this tea, I'll probably be looking not just for the flavor and aroma, but the feeling of the tea. Uh, because Dansong tends to have a very specific feeling for me. Uh, yeah, so let's see what you guys are drinking this, this afternoon. Some Gushu Shopor from Shiloh. Could that be from West China tea? Eric had some Gushu Hongcha. Wow, so many Gushu gang people today. Parker's <laughs> having some Gushu Shupu. Or are you just making fun of <laughs> Gushu Shupu? <laughs> it's pretty nice to say. Um, Joe's got back from a fishing trip. Wow, I'm shocked. And having a Chinese oolong. And then might have a Malfang. Malfang sounds really nice, actually. Uh, yeah. And then Shiloh's about to have some dyed ginger lemon black sugar tisane. I really like the sound of that. Wow. I really like uh, black sugar anything. <laughs> okay, so let's try this out. And then uh, Simone Ongaretti is here and Cindy Drew, welcome to tea practice. We're on tea number two of our blind tasting run in which I'm actually ahead. Shocking, it's amazing. So let's see what this, this dan song is. So I, I got the first tea right, which is the Japanese oolong. I got super excited, so now I'm all hyped up. Now we gotta try to identify what tea this is. Ooh, hmm. It, it it does it does seem like. Wow, now I think it smells like duck shit oolong, yasho sham. Because when I smelled the leaves just in the bowl, they smelled very sweet and straightforward. And like I said, Milan Xiang tends to be a little bit more sweet and straightforward. But now that I'm smelling the liquor. It's got a little bit more complexity to it, which to me reads as Yasha Xiang or honeysuckle also is used for it. Interesting. Okay, let's try it out. Ooh. I don't think that's Milan Xiang, actually. Just my first guess. I'm not sure yet. Oh, it's so good. Wow. That's really good. What is this? Okay, wow. That's very, very relaxing. I wonder what that could be. <laughs> trying to trying to look at Steven's face to see if he'll give me a reaction. Mm -hmm. That's very tasty. Now I find that the higher the grade of the dance song. Well, number one. Did you notice how long this tea is steeping? For those of you who like to brew dansong, and the whole like, oh, if you're working with dansong, you gotta put in the gaiwan and then put the water in and then put the water out immediately. This that we're doing is a very, very, very long steep. Only a really good dansong is gonna stand up to this kind of steep. So if this is one of our lower grade dansongs, which we don't have very many because I don't like them, <laughs> it's not gonna stand up. This is very sweet, very smooth, no like a, that's just the tiniest hint of bitterness, but in a good way to make the tea rounded. I think this is a very good, good grade dansong tea, which we have from a couple different sources. I don't think it's Milan Xiang. Thinking now, it's just not as sweet as I think it is supposed to be. Uh, the tea that I'm thinking, actually, I don't think that there's a name for it in that bag well maybe yeah what could this be hmm wow steven gave me a hard one on the second one because it's a you have to identify which fragrance it is right it's a very good dance song there's a lot going on there's a sweetness to it there's a florality there's some kind of like peach seed, like when you, you know, bite into a peach and that seed has that specific taste too. I say that because I think Minlan Xiang, some of the, the more floral, fruity, uh, very popular ones tend to be very kind of straightforward 
This one has a little bit more depth to it. Uh, but the higher grade Milan Shangs will also have some of that depth. I don't think this is Milan Shang though. And the thing is, if it is, because there's a very good possibility that it might turn out to be, this is why I like doing this blind tasting, because in the future, I will be forever like reminded that even if I think this doesn't taste like Milan Shang, it's actually Milan Shang tastes like. <laughs> this is why it's so fun to do these blind tastings. Because even if you're wrong, you learn a lot. Even if you're right, you learn a lot. Either way, you learn a lot and have fun. Yeah, wow, what is this? I, could it be Yashishan? It might be Yashishan. It might be Dr. Long. So I'm going to go with my gut, because I don't tend to go with my gut. And I've always shot myself in the foot like that. I don't think this is Milan Shang. I think this is some kind of Dr. Long. Yeah, I think this is Dr. Long. I think it's Dr. Dumong. Yeah. Could it be? Yeah, it's not super sweet. I feel like Milan Xiang is like nectar. It's like juice. This is not one of those like only juice. It's like juice plus. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Let me think about it. Let us know how you guys are doing with your tea sessions as I'm thinking about it because I feel like I'm making a call too quickly. I'm seeing Steven just chug this tea, which means that he likes it. Uh, man, what if it is a Milan Xiang? Because there is some Milan Xiang that he likes. Ooh, what could this be? I don't think this is Mother Bush Dan Song. Steven would not put Mother Bush Dan Song on this lineup. Would he? I mean, it's possible, I guess. Oh my god, did you put Mother Bush Dan Song on this lineup? I don't think it's Mother Bush Dan Song. You know, it might be. Fuck. <laughs> What fragrance is the mother bush that you have? It's uh. It's out of the bag now. It's, in the bowl. it's actually duck shit. So, Dashi Shang, yeah. So technically, technically, I can cover my bases if I if I pick <laughs> duck shit oolong <laughs> because the mother bush duck shit oolong that we have is a duck shit oolong. Um, and by mother bush, we're talking about the older style of dan song. I mean the older trees of dan song. Which are going to be a lot, very, very smooth, very, very just kind of grounding feeling. Wow. Yeah, I think this is a duck shit long. Locking in. Should I lock it in? Should I lock it in? Blink twice for yes, you people who've already seen the, the Discord spoiler. <laughs> can, I, can I guess anything else? I know that we have a couple different ones. We have quite a bit of Milan Xiang, we have quite a bit of duck shit. We have a couple like weirdo ones. I don't think those are the, 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 yeah. <sighs> Which duck shit oolong would it be if it is a duck shit oolong? If the duck shit oolong duck shits oolong, would the duck shit still shit duck? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's duck shit oolong. I have I'm I'm kind of stumped on this one. I'm not sure which one it is. So let's see. Oh my god, it's a Milan Xiang. Why did I get it wrong? Okay, so it is a Milan Xiang Oolong. Um, for those of you who are on the Discord, you're probably like, hee 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 hee, she thinks it's a, she, she thinks it's not a Milan Xiang. So now I know that Milan Xiang can be that complex and structured in a bowl brew like this. So it is a Milan Xiang. So I got the area right, but I didn't get the cultivar or the ver variety correctly. Um, yeah, so Milan Xiang is the answer. I'm not right. We got to go to the tiebreaker. <laughs> so even minutes. if I'm wrong, I'm pretty happy about the fact that we got to dive deep into a, to a dance song like this. I'm surprised at how it's so, it's got so much, it's got so much grit to it. And yes, this is the highest grade Milan Xiang that we have. So now I know that the higher the Milan Xiang is, the more it can get elegant and complex like this. Wow. And by the way, this whole time, see how long this is steeping? And it still, it still tastes fantastic. So it's true that Dan Song usually is very difficult to brew, but if you have a good one, it's honestly not that difficult to brew. It's just holding up like this. Okay, so we're one and one. No! I almost saw... 
I almost saw victory in my sights. Let's go to number three. Uh, yeah, can I get a point five <laughs> for round two? <laughs> so my guess was duck shit oolong from um, Guangdong province. So uh, duck shit dancing, but the answer was Binan Chan dancing. So close, but no. What, what, what's the what's the saying? Close, close but, no. but no cigar. Cigar, yeah. I was gonna say close but no potato. <laughs> I don't That's know why. Not it. <laughs> close but no potato. Close but no tomato. You just say that anyway. Close but no potato. <laughs> why did they say no? Close but no cigar. Where is that? Okay. All right. So maybe my taste is soft today. Cause I, I do, I am stuffy. It's still not a, it's still not an excuse though. I should be able to do this even without. Uh, Nazanin, nice to see you on this afternoon from Maybe Vegas. It's for when people are cosplaying Duke Nukem, and they don't have. <laughs> that's okay. stupid. Okay, that's stupid. This is why I do the lives, <laughs> and Stephen doesn't. All right, next one. Can I have a? Okay, let's get a towel. I'm gonna show you the dry leaves for this last one. You guys on Discord will be able to see. Um, if I get this one right, oh, Stevens, dropping, dropping some, some, some tricky ones here. This is a Taiwan oolong. Doesn't it look like a Taiwan oolong? How do you know? It looks like a Taiwan oolong. It, it sounds like. Oh my God! Did you hear that? So what I said last week about a good tea having some weight. Did you hear that? You can hear the bling. They're just so. Heavy. They've got so much weight to them. This is a high quality Taiwan oolong. And look at how little leaves it took for Steven to get to 2.5 grams. So a lower grade oolong, even if it's rolled up, will take more leaves to fill up 2.5 grams. But because these are so heavy, you just need a couple of them to get to 2.5. Um, that means that there's a lot of oils kind of inside the leaves. The leaves were properly processed. The the, the 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 plant was properly maintained. Lots of goodness inside. So this is probably a really good oolong. Uh, oh man, I'm nervous because we have a fuck ton of Taiwanese oolongs. This is bad, guys. This is really bad. <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad. Um, I mean, it's not... What I mean is, oh my god, we have so many Taiwanese oolongs to choose from. Phew! Okay, let's get going. This is a high mountain, I would say. Um, high mountain has the kind of, it just tends to have it more heavy and bulky and still dark looking leaves. Yeah, this is high mountain. Phew, whose high mountain is this? I can think of a couple people's high mountains that you will probably put in this tasting. Wow, are you gonna trick me? Is this one of Ai's teas? I'm gonna be so angry if this is one of Ai's teas. It smells super good. It smells very fruity. Peachy, mango, nice, nice. I always get so, I get so, I get so insecure that Steven will put one of I's teas, my teacher's teas, in a blind tasting, and I don't get it. Cause I'll kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> I will just murder myself. I will just jump off the window and die. <laughs> I, I won't, don't worry. It's suicide um, prevention mode. <laughs> I know, but yeah. Um, so don't do that. Yeah, don't. Let's not do that. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm not trying to make a joke about it. It just makes me hurt so much that I might do that and get it wrong because I've drunk those teas so many times. We have them at least a couple times a week. That if I get them wrong, oh my god, I'd be so upset and I'd probably quit Instagram for a couple of months. Um. You know, this could be one of their teas. It's it's very possible. I think this is like a Lishan or a... I don't think it's a Shanlin Shi. It's too fruity to be Shanlin Shi. I find that Shanlin Shi tends to be a more kind of like piney and fresh, uh, like walking along the forest. This one has a little bit more fruit to it, which tells me I don't think it's Shanlin Shi. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's Chi Lai either. Some of the mountains in Taiwan tend to have more fruity, more floral, and other ones have a little bit more kind of minerally or foresty. But this is very important, okay? Sometimes the mountain matters less than who's making the tea. So if you have the same person making tea in Alishan versus Shanlin Chi versus, let's say, 
two different people making uh, high mountain oolong in Shanlin Shi. Sometimes the Ali Shan and Shanlin Shi will look more alike than the two Shanlin Shi ones because of the processing of the maker. Uh, because it's, it's an art, right? Like no two tea makers make tea the same way. And some tea makers have a very specific kind of personality they put into their leaves that they can make a Lishan look a little bit like an Alishan or an Alishan look a little bit like a Shan Min Shi. Uh, I'm sure that the experts can, can tell, but for me, I'm like, man, teas from the same maker, they taste very similar. So don't beat yourself up if you can't get the mountains right. It's very, very difficult to do. Uh, very confusing. They're so similar. <laughs> same thing with like the, the season, the, the year that's, that's going on, you know? There's so many factors that can affect a mountain's taste that I, I do want to get to that point where I can identify them, but I'm still not. And I've been to Taiwan like a billion, I mean it's not a billion times, but a lot. I've been to Taiwan, not, not, non -zero not a non-zero amount. <laughs> and it's still very difficult for me to figure out the mountain. Okay, let's get this started. Oh my god, it's so fruity! What is this? Holy crap! This is very fruity. What is this? Wow, it's so fruity! I could almost swear it's the bitter mountain tea that we have, but it's on the table right there. <laughs> wow, that's a very fruity tea. That's maybe like a Lishan or something? It's very good. I don't think it's my teacher's tea. I have many teachers, so I mean like we don't have like the one teacher, but I say that because it's I. Uh, uh, I don't think it's their tea. It doesn't- the tea's not this fruity usually. Uh, man. That's very fruity. I don't think that's the tea. The tea tends to have a little bit more delicacy than this. It's a little bit more like... This one's got a little bit more of the explosive fruitiness. Gosh, guys, I'm like so close to getting a win of over Steven, but this Taiwan Unlong is going to stop me right here. Am I sure this is a high mountain? Maybe it's not a high mountain. I'm going to wait for it to open up and then we'll look at the leaves. It could be like a... Some, some Dongding can be this fruity, actually. But not from Dongding itself, I would say from like the surrounding areas. There are some, like, like Jushan, Ningjian area, Wulongs that can be this fruity. It does have a high mountain character, though. It tastes like a high elevation tea. It doesn't seem familiar to me. Fuck, if this is Ai's tea, I will- I might actually- <laughs> I won't kill myself, but I might like skin myself a little bit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my goodness. What is this? Maybe this is our friend Shell's Lishan. Maybe that's what this is. It's very, very clean. It doesn't feel like my teacher's tea. I don't think it is. I don't think it's her tea. The leaves don't look like her tea either. I think this must be Shell's Lishan. I think it's a Lishan. Um, Pear Mountain from Taiwan. I don't think it's an Alishan. It's very fruity, very floral. It's got that Lishan kind of thing going on. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, Zizipu, welcome. Rabbit of Tea, welcome. I'm at the very end stages of a blind tasting where I got the first tea right, which was a Japanese oolong, and I was so happy I shook the table. And then I got the second tea wrong, because I guessed it was a <laughs> duck shit oolong when it was actually a Milan Xiang, a very high grade Milan Xiang. I mean, not super high grade, but like a pretty, it's pretty good, like top, top 5 percentile, I would say, Dantong oolong on the market. That we know about. <laughs> so this is the last one, this is the tiebreaker tea. And I'm feeling pretty like nervous about it. I feel like um, I feel very insecure because when it, you know, when someone's testing the area that you feel like you should know, you kind of want to get it right, right? And I'm not sure. Oh man, I think it's Li Shan Oolong. 
I think it's, yeah, I think this is Leishan. I don't think it's iced tea. Steven, don't make me skin myself. <laughs> I got 10 minutes left. Am I gonna skin myself? You look like you're uncomfortable. You're gonna make me skin myself if this is wrong. Wow. You know what? If I'm wrong, I'm very comfortable with being wrong. It's just gonna be the hardest wrong I've ever had in a blind tasting if I'm wrong. But I still don't think it's their tea. It just doesn't look like it. It doesn't, I mean, I don't know, maybe? I'm gonna wait for the leaves to open up a little bit. I got 10 minutes. Gosh. Gosh. <laughs> oh my god, this is this is harrowing. So why do I not think it's my teacher's tea? It's too fruity, it's too it's too sweet. It's just so sweet. I think like the tea is a little bit different than this. And there's also a withering withering difference that doesn't seem like they processed it. Because when they make tea, there's almost no withering defect on it because that's the thing that they do oh oh my god steven's giving me this look that makes me that makes me really nervous <sighs> tea is so humbling oh my god <laughs> when you're faced with just a tea and you and you could be wrong and it could be a tea that you don't recognize even after you've had it a million times i've had their teas like hundreds of times by now if i don't recognize it i'm gonna kill myself <laughs> Yeah, ego death for sure. I've had so many ego deaths though. Can I not? I don't, I don't have any lives left, Steven. <laughs> should I call it? Should I call it? Yeah, as I'm watching these leaves open up, they don't look like... It doesn't taste like a leash. Like, it doesn't taste like their Yushan. It doesn't taste like their Alishan. Oh my god, could it be the new spring Jade Mountain? I don't think so. Oh my god, it might be. Could it be? Ah, oh my god! Oh my gosh. I mean, I love that tea, but I don't know it that well. Is that why it's not familiar to me? <clears throat> okay, let's look at the leaves a little bit more. I know how much oxidation like they put in their leaves. Sort of. Yeah, I don't think this is their tea. Should I just do it? I'm gonna say that this is our friend Shell's Leisha, who is a friend of ours we met in Taipei on our last tea tour. And we walked by her shop and we were just like, it was an area that I know really, really well, which is Yongkang Street in, in Taipei. And I walked by that road that I've walked by so many times because we used to have our meetings at my old project there. And I was like, wait, what is that place? And it was like this tiniest tea shop with the most amazing high mountain oolong on that whole like road. That's Shell. In the whole neighborhood. In the whole neighborhood, yeah. It's just, I mean, and the neighborhood is full of tea shops and that's her shop. And her tea is as clean as my teacher's tea, but it's a different thing. So that's why I'm calling it here because it's the same area of like excellent tea that we're like holy shit she's amazing i want her i want to be her friend forever but it's just the dial is just turned a little bit to the side so i am going to say that this is not my teacher's tea i think this is shell's leishan you're walking in yeah walking in oh my god no i'm gonna scan myself i'm gonna scan myself why it's my teacher's tea <laughs> Don't tell I and don't tell Fang. Don't say the IGTV. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. They're not gonna let me come back with Taiwan. I'm gonna skip myself. It's 2020 Ellie Shun. I like it. You're trying to trick me because this is actually the tea I like the least from the entire harvest of Spring this. Spring 2020. That's that's your lowest ranked one. That's my lowest ranked one. I, I really bad. like it. Not that it's bad. Uh, okay. So, <clears throat> alright. So this is going to be the one... <laughs> this is going to be the one <laughs> IGTV we can't save because I can't let them know I didn't know it was the Alishan. I mean, to be fair, okay, to be fair... You haven't drank very much. I haven't drunk very much of this. So thank God it's not the Yushan Jade Mountain because 
I've drunk so much of you that. You totally would have gotten that one. I think I would have gotten that one. This tea, I've had like... I've never gone through this whole tea because I did not like this tea from this harvest. So Steven's trying to te teach me a lesson to say that I actually like it because it's actually really good. Because she sent us four different teas from that harvest. The Yushan, the Forever Spring, Forever Spring number two, and then this tea. And I didn't like this tea, but now I do. I'm sweating. I'm banished from Taiwan. I'll never <laughs> be able to go back. So can someone tell me where we can go since we were trying to move to Taiwan with them, but now I can't go. <laughs> The thing is, though, my gut didn't know. I had no idea it was Ali Shan because, and this is this is the, the lesson here is not that my gut didn't know, but because my gut said something totally different. I thought it was the Li Shan from from our friend Shell. What I should do is when I get a tea that I don't like that much from someone that we trust a lot, I need to study it more, because this was the one tea I barely tasted this season because I didn't like it the first couple times I tried it. I kept drinking the, the, the Jade Mountain because I really liked it. So that's that's the lesson here. I actually like this tea a lot today and I haven't liked it very much. Yeah. Also, I haven't had Alishan from them a lot the last couple years because their Alishan the last couple years has not been good. They completely didn't have an, an Alishan last year in spring. I'm just justifying the fact that my whole body is sweating. <laughs> But yes, yeah, still a lesson. Absolutely a lesson. Um, so yeah, I guess we're moving to Canada instead of Taiwan. <laughs> Please don't tell them. <laughs> what are we going to do? We always tag whose teas they are on the recording when we post this to IGTV. Now I can't. I'm screwed. I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So yeah, I am going to go through like a spiritual skinning on myself where I need to make sure I study this tea more. Um, yeah, Steven taught me a lesson because this is actually Steven's... Do you like this tea? It's not my favorite. I like it though. When you were saying you didn't like it, but I like it. Yeah, maybe it just like breathes a little bit, you know? I mean, the so, tea now is my favorite, but I... It, yeah, yeah, I actually do like this tea now. So lesson learned. Oh my god, I'm sweating bullets right now. Uh, yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> what a roller coaster that my tasting was today. I went from being able to identify a Japanese oolong from 150 different oolongs to not recognizing the newest Alishan from our teacher. Uh, wow, okay. So, we're gonna have to sign off while I kind of like, while I kind of, you know, absorb all this information. I actually like this tea, apparently. Um, I'm gonna have to study it more. Yeah, so if you get a tea from someone that you like, that you don't understand, that you don't like at the very beginning, you really need to just dig into it a little bit more. There is the possibility that you just don't like it. But if it's someone that you trust, who you always like their tea consistently, try to give it more than just the first measure, because there might be something in the tea that you're not seeing yet that might come out in later just manifestations of the tea especially if it's new let it rest for a little bit go back to it try to check it out um yeah i'm just shocked because i just have not liked this tea and now i do in the bowl that sucks <laughs> so we're gonna sign off and decide whether or not i'm tagging i and feng in this recording because if i do they will read it they will watch it and then find out that i didn't guess correctly so maybe not <laughs> I think we should. <sighs> They're gonna be so disappointed in me. <laughs> Nine Nine's gonna be so disappointed in me. <laughs> oh my goodness, they are gonna be so disappointed. It's okay. All right, so we'll sign off. I'm gonna go chill out with this tea and learn some more. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> We're gonna sign off. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> God, have a wonderful weekend. I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. I just think it's really funny. <laughs> Goodbye.